All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class, I've been going through a series of video presentations that I'm creating based off of the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development Series. I'm in the JavaScript section, hopefully just finishing it up, and we're talking client-side storage. All right, we got partway through it in the last example, or in the last video, I should say. But now we're moving into a more involved example. So it says here, let's apply this newfound knowledge by writing a simple working example to give you an idea how web storage can be used. In this example, we can enter a name after which the page will update to give you a personalized greeting. It will also persist across page or browser reloads because the name is used in web storage. So you can find the simple example here. As it says, it'll be a web, simple website with a header a footer, content, and a form that will allow you to enter your name. Okay, so let's take a look at it. And it's good too because forms are what we're going to start going into in the next series of videos. So let's copy that. This is meant to be called personalgreeting.html. So I will just, uh, let's, <clears throat> let's make a new folder we'll call web storage. And again, this will be personal hyphen greeting dot HTML. All right, there it is. If I run this now, where is my web storage? And I open it up, there it is. All right. So let me enter your name, Jeff. All right. Oh, I don't want to jump too far ahead. So let's see what they say here. <clears throat> First, make a local copy. Did that. Next, note how our HTML references a JavaScript file called index.js. With, a line, with this line. Now it also says defer because it puts it in the top and basically it says um, that we need to wait until everything has been loaded before you start to run the script. So create an index.js file in here as well. So again, we'll come in here and I will immediately save it. All right, so that says text. Notice if I if I were to choose HTML, there's our personal greeting, but I don't want that. I want this saved as a JavaScript file, so it will automatically try to save it as a JS, but I'm going to put that in there anyway. So what did they say they wanted this to save this as? Index.js. Index.js. All right, there's nothing in here yet, but that's totally fine. We'll start off by creating the references to all the HTML features we need to manipulate. So that's these constants here. We'll create them as constants as these references do not need to change during the life cycle of the app. Add the following lines. You'll notice I get the color coding immediately here because I have saved this previously as a JavaScript file. Next up, we need to include a small event listers to stop the form from actually submitting. All right, so again, this is going to say on here that when we click a button to submit, we don't want it to go anywhere. All right. Now we need to add an event listener, the handler function of which will run to say hello when the say hello button is clicked. The comments explain in detail what each bit does, but in essence, we are taking the name of the user that you put into the input box, saving it into web storage using set item, then running a function called name display check that will handle updating the actual website. So add this to the bottom of the code. And again, they do a great job here of putting in comments to explain everything that's happening. All right. 
just going to move these over here. Oh, here we got it. No, that's good. All right. At this point, we also need an event handler to run when the forget button is clicked. That is to only that is only displayed after the say hello has been clicked. The two form states toggle back and forth, meaning when one's on, the other one's off. In this function, we remove the name item from web storage using remove item, then run it again to update the display. And again, as you can see, I do a nice job here of adding comments to explain what's going on. It is now time to define the function, which is the long one here, the name display check function itself. Here we check whether or not <clears throat> the name item has been stored in web storage. So you do a get name. All right. And then if it is in there, then you want to put in your H1 welcome plus that name. Welcome to our website, Jeff, type of an idea. All right. All right. If not, it will be false. So if it's down here, it's just going to be welcome to our website. It's a very simplistic type of example in that we're not doing anything that's groundbreaking here. And again, commented up the wazoo. Last but not least, we need to run the name display check function every time the page is loaded. If we don't do this, then the personalized greeting will not persist across page loads. Add this to the bottom of your code. Whoops. <clears throat> you can see the finished running version here. Well, let's try the running one and see if ours does the same thing. So. Jeff, say hello. All right, there's Jeff, there's Jeff. Notice if you want me to forget you, it comes back again. If I leave it blank, it says, please fill out this field. So there's a little bit of validation done in the form. But if I just put in one, two, three, it says, welcome, one, two, three. I'm not checking to make sure it's alphabetic. You know, I should, I, can I just put in a blank space? Yes, see that? So it, there is a little bit of built-in validation, but not what we'd say is very much validation. All right, let's try ours and see if indeed it works. So, oh, where is that? Web storage. So I'll come in here again. Oh, let's put in Mary. Welcome, Mary. Mary, forget. Okay, and it seems to work just fine. <clears throat> it says there's a slightly more complex example to explore, so if you want to take a look at that, you can. All right. Again, I've mentioned this before, but I want to say it again, and that is it says in the line, the defer attribute specifies that the contents of the script element are not to, to execute until the page has finished loading. The reason that this is important is for years there has been a long-running debate over do you put this script tag in the head section, do you put the script tag in the bottom of the body section, and does it matter? And, and some people believe one way strongly, some people believe the other way strongly. Now, I was always taught that you put it at right before the ending body tag. Because then you know the head loads before the body and everything is loaded. But using the word defer says, hey, defer running this script until everything is executed. Which means that you can now put this tag in your head section without having to worry about it. All right, Other people think that's good because this is all stuff that directly you know, belongs in the head section. This file is not showing on our web page. The file is running in accordance with our web page, but it's not showing. So a lot of people think, like the CSS, it should be put into the um, into the head section. All right. I'm a little bit early here. I'm at 10 minutes. But I think that since this is a new topic, the storing complex data with index DB, I believe I will stop right here, and I will pick it up again when... Uh, we return.